Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jerry Svell, and I have a special guest with me, Trey Johnson. Trey, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank Looking you. Looking for forward to hearing me. your testimony, and and the way God's using you is just amazing. It yes, just thrills sir. me. And uh, I know our audience is going to be looking forward to hearing about it. Thank Today you. we're going to be talking about a subject that I believe you're going to enjoy. We're going to be talking about excelling in what God has called you to do. You know, God placed the blessing, His blessing upon your life. And the word bless means to empower to prosper, empower to succeed, empower to increase, to multiply, to rise above. And it also means to excel. God wants you to excel in whatever you're called to do. The reason being is because obviously it'll be a great joy in your life. Uh, it'll, it'll bring great satisfaction to your life. But also the primary reason is because when you're excelling, it makes the God you serve attractive to others. So we're going to be talking about excelling in what God has called you to do. Trey, first of all, I want you to talk to us about your testimony, how you got into what you're doing today, and I'll let you just lead into okay. that. Okay. Um, you know, years ago, and it's so it's it's a dream come true to to get to share the word with you because when I when I did give my life to the Lord back in uh, 1995, somehow I, I got a hold of your partner letter. Uh -huh. And and that's how I started learning the Word of God. Your partner would come in, and I would just I would memorize every scripture that there uh -huh. was, and I would apply it to my life. And you know, talking about excelling and, and the blessing. And James tells us that whenever we hear the Word and we do the Word, then we're blessed in our right. our doings. You know, that's we're right. empowered to move forward. And there was a desire that just began to rise up on the inside of me to excel because what I'd heard about God growing up. Um, that isn't the picture that I had, that God wanted to bless us, that God yeah. wanted to prosper us. And, but as I got into the Word for myself, I began to see that He wanted to bless everything that we put our hands to. Sure. And so I, I rodeo professionally, and I'm in the ministry also and do a lot of leadership stuff. But at that time in my life, my focus was rope, and I had a desire. Uh, Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He gives you the desires That's of right. your heart. Amen. And and that desire was to be the best that so I, I wanted to. When did the desire to be involved in rodeo start? Well, I grew up doing it. You know, my West mom. Texas. Yes, West Texas. My mom, dad, grandparents. You know, I spent uh, days out there with my granddad. You know, he wouldn't okay. stop for lunch, but I'd fill my leggings full of biscuits and sausage. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't skipping lunch, but uh -huh. he was. And, yeah. and so I always wanted, you know, I competed, rode bulls, bucking horses, roped, everything growing up. And. Um, but then as I, when I accepted the Lord and started going after Him, I began to see how my desires and God's desires, they were lining up and I knew that they were God's desires and that God wanted me to excel. And mm -hmm. um, so the more I stayed in the Word, and it was so funny, I was filling up a horse's water trough one day and you know when you stick a water hose in it and it, it can run all the junk out of it, the moss, everything yeah. else, you know. And he said, Trey, if you'll keep my word in your heart like that, yeah. I'll remove everything that is not of me. And what will be remaining will be my will, my desires. Yeah. That's how you know that they're my desires. And, yeah. and Jesus tells us the same example in uh, John 15 when he says that he's the vine and we're the branch. Mm -hmm. And the same life that's in him is the same life that's in us, the same desires in him and the same right. desires that's in us. And so as I kept going after God and I kept getting your partner letters and learning the Word of God, I was um, in a lot of junk at the time. You know, I had uh, I went home, I'd quit college, and I was living with a girl out in El Paso, Texas. And, and I went home one weekend. My parents did a great job because they said, you know, we're not going to support financially the decisions you're making. And, mm -hmm. and so they'd, they'd cut me off, so to say. And I went home and I was leaving one weekend and my dad came out, tears running down his face. And he said, Trey, the Lord show me that you're going to die if you don't straighten up. And at the time I was like, eh, he's just being a dad, you yeah, know. <laughs> sure. yeah. uh, but two weeks later, I was leaving a rodeo by Austin and the guy I was roping with was in the driver's seat. And the girl that I was dating at the time was in the back seat. And they were asleep, and I, and I woke up, and I was driving, so that's not a good sign in yeah. the first place. But I was running 70 down a four-lane highway with a truck and horse trailer. And I woke up, and I tried to ease the truck back onto the highway, and I saw that I wasn't going to make it because it had one of the big water culverts there in the mm -hmm. middle of the highway. So I pulled it back over with the truck, and I jumped it perfect with the truck, but the trailer caught that water culvert right on. Mm. And of course, it just spun us across the highway. And as we were spinning, you know, things are just in slow motion when that's happening. Mm -hmm. But the horse trailer was just going end over end over end. And once we came to a standstill over there and I realized that we were all okay, I took off running back over there and the horses were just going nuts. They were just pawing. And, and so 
we were waiting on the jaws of life to come because by this time we'd called 911 and mm -hmm. everything else, you know. And I climbed in that trailer to calm the horses down, and I remembered my dad. Wow. And I knew God had spared my life. You know, thank mm -hmm. God for praying, parents. Sure, sure. And uh, I knew God had spared my life. And that night in the trailer, I said, Lord, I don't want to be religious. I don't want to play church. I want to know you. Either you're real or you're not real. Mm -hmm. And so from that moment, and I still look at it that way, of I just want to know God. Yes, yeah. I've discovered what I'm called to do in ministry and rodeoing and but I just want to know God. I want it to be real. I want, it, I, I want to know the presence of God, the power of God, the Word of God, yeah. because He does want us to excel. And it's that the anointing of God, the blessing that you're talking about on our life that only comes from a relationship with mm -hmm. Him. And, um, and isn't that, it exciting that God enjoys what you enjoy? Yes, sir. You know, that was a great revelation to me. When uh, I was growing up, I, I had no idea that God got any pleasure out of anything I got pleasure out of. Because <laughs> yeah. everything I got pleasure out of, you know, they said it was bad, it was evil, it was sinful. Yes, sir. All. But I'll never forget, uh, years ago, I'd been in the ministry about 10 years, because I've been in 48 now, but I'd been in the ministry about 10 years, and, and one of my partners came up to me and said, God told me to buy you a motorcycle. And I said, well, sir, uh, I'm not sure that God told you that. I appreciate your thoughtfulness, but, but I don't ride motorcycles anymore. Now, I grew up riding motorcycles. I was passionate about it. But uh, I said, I gave that up when I went to the ministry. And he said, well, you're the one who taught me how to pray. I believe I can pray as good as you can now. <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't mean to insinuate you couldn't pray and you couldn't hear God. Maybe it's me that needs to go pray. So I did. And, and the Lord said, I did tell him to buy you a motorcycle. I said, wow. why? I gave that up for you. He said, number one, I know it won't come between me and you. Yes, sir. Number two, I know it'll bring joy to your life. And if it brings joy to you, it'll bring joy to me. Hmm. I said, God, I've never heard anything like that before. And he said, number three, turn what once was your passion into a tool for evangelism. Yes, sir. So that's what he did. And of course, we started Chariots Like Christian Bikers, winning thousands of people to the Lord every year. Yes, sir. And, and that's what you're doing with the rodeo. Yes, sir. God took something that you were passionate about, and when you gave your life to Him, He said, okay, I can use what you're doing yes, sir. as a tool for evangelism. Yeah, it, it's so fun. You know, of course, through the process of time and, and development, I went on to win the Rookie of the Year in the Professional Rodeo in 2000. Yeah. Um, and then the next year, right after that, I was in Salinas, California at the rodeo, and I was just spending my time with the Lord. and. And it's like I, I had an open eye vision from the Lord and I just saw the Lord putting bread in my mouth and he kept putting pieces of bread in my mouth and he got up and of course when he got up, I got up out of respect for him and he come back around and he put another piece of bread in my mouth and he patted me on the back and he said, now Trey, go feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. I thought, no way, Lord, I'm not a pastor, you know. <laughs> yeah. But once I got before him because I made a decision, Lord, I, I'm going to seek you until yeah. I know what you're telling me to do. And and so from that point, because I was traveling and ministering at the time, I was, you know, the sponsorships were coming, I was increasing, I was climbing mm -hmm. the ladder, becoming at the top of the game. And, and I read where Solomon, whenever he became king, how he gave sacrificial offerings. And he asked the Lord, you know, the Lord showed up and he said, what do you want? He says, well, why yeah. I want wisdom to lead your people coming in and going out. Mm -hmm. And so when I knew the Lord at that time was, was wanting me to pastor, and I pastored for a little over eight years and started several different churches and everything. But during that time, um, my rodeo was my Isaac, Abraham and yeah. Isaac, and the ministry was my Isaac, the traveling ministry. And so that's what I had as my sacrificial offerings. And I, I laid those down and I said, and I took the horses that I had, Dr. Savell, and I began to go around. I just loaded up my horse trailer and I began to go around and I began to sow them as my sacrificial yeah. offerings um, to the people the Lord mm -hmm. showed me to. Yeah. And so for the first time in my life, I didn't have um, at that time trucks, trailers. I got rid of everything besides yeah. a few saddles. And I was, it was so you neat because. Like my testimony. Well, and, and it. I gave my hot rods away, my motorcycles away. Yes, uh, sir. My muscle cars away. <laughs> I said, God, I want to show you that you're number one in my life now. Yes, sir. Because that was my God right. before then, you know, before I came to Christ. That was my God. That's what I lived for. Yeah. And uh, he, he didn't make me do that. I just said, I want to show you yes, sir. that you're number one in my life. That's what you did. Yes, sir. And he gave it back to you. He did. Yeah. He did. I was up in Colorado and I started a church up there and 
Uh, my phone rang one day and this guy said, hey, this is so-and-so, I hear you're up here, would you come rope with us? I have an indoor arena because where we were at, it snows, you know, five, six mm -hmm. months out of the year. And, uh, and I said, I don't know, I'll, I'll call you back. And I hadn't been on a horse in almost a year at this time. Yeah. And, and so I prayed and, and I felt like I was supposed to go. And what began to happen, Dr. Savelle, is when I went out and I started roping with those guys, that in a 40-mile valley up there, every guy that roped ended up giving his life to the Lord. Praise God. And so when the Lord, He gave it back to me. Yeah. He wanted me to enjoy it and, and use mm -hmm. that as a tool. And it was so fun because I was going from, from Colorado to Midland, Texas to start a church. And everybody who roped had ended up giving their life to the Lord except this one guy. And he was a, a Japanese ski instructor. And I'd never seen this guy. And, and he was a Buddhist. But he yeah. never would miss one of our Bible studies because what I would do is I'd start helping them with the roping. And we'd stop in the middle and I'd start doing Bible studies, disciple mm -hmm. them. And they started coming yeah. to the church. And so I said, Lord, this is the last guy that hadn't accepted the Lord. You know, what do you want me to do? Um, and so they had a weekly rodeo in this for tourists and everything. He said, I want you to pay his entry fee and rope with him in the roping. And the guy didn't rope really well. And so I called him and, and I asked him if he'd rope in the rodeo. And he was just so excited, you know. And sure enough, he went out and roped the steer and turned him. And I come in there and I was like, Man, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm going to get this steer no matter what. And I roped him and Sure enough, this you would have thought we'd have won the world championship. This guy yeah. was so excited, and we rode out the back of the arena, and it opened up the door to start talking to him about all the Bible studies. And the Bible says, the goodness of God leads men to repentance. Mm -hmm. And that night at the rodeo, he accepted the Lord, and it was like God using the gift to bring sure. people into the kingdom. And, and now it's just so exciting to see. Um, I just look at it differently. It's a tool, like you were yeah, saying, about right. the motorcycles and the hot rods, and um, it's just a tool, yeah. you know. Well, you know, Oral Roberts taught me years ago. He said, Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. And he said, he didn't, end, he didn't end that with just geographically. It's going into every man's world. Yes, sir. And so we've got to have people going into that rodeo world. Yeah. Uh, that's why we go into the biker world. Uh, I've had the opportunity to, to uh, minister at car shows, uh, at races, you know, um, it's just amazing how God will take something that was so meaningful in your life, even before you knew God. Yes, sir. And, and something that you live for, and then he'll turn it into a tool for evangelism if you'll just make him first place in your life. And that's what sir. you've done, praise God. How long have you been doing this now? Um, well, I'm... Uh... 42, and so I've been doing it ever since I was a little kid. You know, as far as just focusing on my team roping, um, it was whenever I accepted the Lord. Because I did a lot of different mm -hmm. events when I was in college, and I roped calves and did everything else, you know. But focusing on my team roping uh, was once I accepted the Lord. And I was 20, so 22 years yeah. on that alone. Now, I learned earlier today that uh, you know a, a, a great friend of mine, Tom Underhill from uh, Russellville, Arkansas. Yes, sir. You, you and Tom have done a lot of things together. We have, yeah. We used to do, the, they were called Young Pro Camps, and we'd bring young people in. Um, Jeff and Carol Hogner started that, and, mm -hmm. and Tom and I got to be a part of the teaching team, and, and it was just so fun, and, and uh, it's neat to just meet people that have a heart for God and, and enjoy doing what you do and want to make a difference in yeah. the lives of people. So you, you preach in churches. Yes, sir. And uh, you do a lot of youth uh, events as well. I do. And of course, uh, the doors have opened for the uh, ministering at the rodeos and so forth. Yes, sir. You know, a lot of the top guys kind of look look to me as their pastor. Um, mm -hmm. And it, the, God used the roping as just a, a vehicle because yeah. every week I'll be, one week I'll be in a Baptist church, then a Methodist church, then a Pentecostal church, then a non-denominational church, mm -hmm. a cowboy church. And, um, and so it's neat to see all the different you know, venues. and now, Is the rodeo events going on all year? Yes, sir. Pretty much from, uh, you know, January to December. There's times that it's more intense than others. Like we'll head out and be gone most of the summer uh, up north where it's a little mm -hmm. cooler. Thank yeah. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're all over. And, and so it's neat when people have asked me to come and speak or whatever at their churches, then I'll let them know when I'm going to be in those areas and and we'll set it up. And, Praise God. Yes, sir. Well, let me share the word with, with the folks. Uh, it's a great testimony, and Trey's going to be back with me next week as well, so don't miss this next week's broadcast. Genesis chapter 12, you have your Bibles with you. Verse 2, God spoke to Abraham and made this comment, And I will make of thee a great nation, I will bless thee, I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Notice, I will bless thee. Now, earlier I said the word bless means to empower to prosper, 
to empower, to increase, to multiply, to excel, and to rise above. That's what the word bless means. It's not some religious word, you know, and, and, and a lot of times, you know, I found uh, when I began studying the blessing way back there, it's one of the first things I began to learn when I came to Christ. And, and I thought, why don't more Christians talk about being blessed? Yes, sir. You know, uh, in my house, in my home where I grew up, the only time I ever heard the word blessed when somebody sneezed. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I don't know why, you know, somebody sneezed, like, God bless you. Right. And, and I thought, that's the only time I've ever even heard the word. And I grew up in a, in a Baptist church, a little country Baptist church, you know, but if, if my pastor talked about the blessing, I don't remember it. Right. He may have, but I don't remember it. But here, God told Abraham, I will bless you. Yes, sir. And that means I will empower you to prosper, to increase, to multiply, to rise above what keeps everybody else down, and I will empower you to excel. Yes, and the reason that God wanted him to excel is because he said, and thou shalt be a blessing. Yeah. So when we're excelling in what we believe God's called us to do, it gets the attention of other people. Yes, sir. You know, people want to be successful. Yeah. People want to excel. People want to rise above. Uh, for most Christians, uh, the Christian life has not been a life of victory, excelling, rising above. Right. You know, and that's the reason so many non-believers don't pay any attention to a lot of Christians because they see their lives. They don't want to be like them. That's right. the way I was. You know, somebody trying to talk me into giving my life to God. Why would I want to do that? Yeah. I would look at other people who said they had done that. And I thought, what have they got? I haven't got, <laughs> yeah. you know? uh, but, but, you know, of course, when you're running from God, Satan will put in your path, the people that, that are not good examples, you know? Yes, sir. But man, when I began to study that and found out that it means empower to prosper, empower to excel. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up with a desire on the inside of me to prosper, to excel. Yes, and I sir. believe that was a God thing. Yes, sir. The devil doesn't put dreams in people's heart right. to excel and rise above. You know, that's a God thing. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich. Yes, sir. Another translation says, it'll produce a rich life, a rich life. That means yeah. not just financially, but rich in every area, rich mm. in health, rich in peace, yes. you know, rich in comfort. I mean, when the blessing of God is on your life, it produces a rich life. Yes, sir. And, and a part of that is excelling. And uh, of course, when I, when I took that and, and began to apply it to my ministry and to the uh, different outreaches, of our ministry, we began to excel in it. And I've noticed over the years that a lot of people I've won to Christ, I never preached one word to. They just watched my life. And eventually they said, how are you doing this? Yeah. Where are you getting all this? And I'd say, it's the God I serve and it's his blessing on my life. Yes. So that's the reason God wants us to excel is because it makes him look good. Yes, sir. It makes him famous and it causes people to be attracted to him. So listen, I want you to know today that if you're born again, if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you have something on you that the rest of the world doesn't know anything about. It's called the blessing. It's, in, it's, it's God's way of empowering you to rise above and to excel. Now, I challenge you to get in the Word and study the blessing like never before. And I promise you, if you'll give some time to the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God, you're going to come out with a revelation of what it means to be blessed, and it's going to change your life forever. Your life will never, ever be the same. Listen, we want to share with you this special announcement, so listen now, and we'll be back in just a few moments. Distraction and discouragement aim to steal your future, but focus brings excellence. It's time to focus on God's plan for you. In the engaging three CD series, What It Takes to Stay Focused, Jerry Savelle brings wisdom and teaches on the characteristics of focused people and how to apply them to your life. Focus is one of the most important success skills. Get motivated to avoid distractions that have held you back. Your future begins with a dream. In the insightful book, If Satan Can't Steal Your Dreams, He Can't Control Your Destiny, 
Jerry Savelle shares revelation on the enemy's strategy for robbing your dreams, the signs of wavering faith and what to do, the secrets of recapturing your dreams, the four principles of bringing dreams into reality, and more. Keep your eyes focused on your destiny. Call now or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request this powerful combo. What it takes to stay focused, and if Satan can't steal your dreams, he can't control your destiny. What God has started in you, he will bring to fruition. Take the steps toward excelling in God's plan today. My name's Trey Johnson. This is my partner story. I grew up in Andrews, Texas, in a great family. But as I got into high school and college, I started hanging out with the wrong people. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. And so I started making wrong decisions. And just a little while into junior college, I ended up quitting college. And I moved to another town living with this girl. And I went home one weekend. And I never will forget it because as I was getting ready to go, my dad came out the back door, had tears running down his face. And he says, Trey, the Lord show me that you're going to die if you don't get your life right with the Lord. And I just thought he was just being a normal parent. I was like, yeah, right, dad, whatever. And went on about my business. And sure enough, two weeks later, I was going from one rodeo to another rodeo in the middle of the night. And the guy that I was roping with was asleep in the passenger seat. And the girl that I was dating at the time was asleep in the back seat. And I ended up going to sleep while I was driving. And I woke up and I was running 70 down a four lane highway and I was in the median. And when I woke up, I tried to get the rig back onto the highway, but I saw that I wasn't gonna make it. So I pulled it back in the middle cause there was a big water culvert in the middle and I straddled it perfect with the truck and the truck jumped it, but the trailer hit it right on. And of course, when the trailer hit it, it separated the truck and trailer and spun us across the highway. And the trailer just went end over end over end. Once we came to a halt over here and I saw everybody was okay, I took off running for the trailer and I crawled in the top of the horses because we were waiting for the jaws of life to get them out and they're kicking and they're pawing and there's blood everywhere and I get down there and I'm petting them and I remember my dad. I knew that God had spared my life that night and so in that horse trailer with blood everywhere and by the way, the horses did end up being okay. But in that moment, I called upon the name of the Lord and I asked him, I said, Lord, I, I want to know that you're real. I want to know your presence. I want to know your power. And from that day forward, I've been a man after the heart of God and I'm the same way today. When you stay hungry, God will open up doors. When you stay hungry, God will bring freedom into your life. I discovered Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. And I began to just simply put him first. And as I put him first, he began to open up opportunities. He began to bring freedom from this addiction and that addiction. And somehow I got a hold of Dr. Savell's partner letter. And at the time I was kind of secluded. I didn't have a church. I didn't know the importance of a church, but I started memorizing his partner letters and started applying his, the word that came from him in my life. And I just, as I gave my attention to it, a desire began to build, to know God, to be my best, to discover my gifts and abilities and passions. And I began to discover that God was a good God and he wanted good things for me, which led me to where I am today, going all over the world, doing leadership conferences, personal development, roping schools, roping clinics, competing at the highest level, simply because a man was willing to do what God had called him and created him to do. It empowered me to be who God has called and created me to be. So I want to encourage you, if you'll stay hungry, no matter where you're at or what you're going through, God will begin to move heaven and earth to reveal his heart and his plan and his will for you. So don't you back off from being hungry and keep growing, keep going. God bless you guys. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you once again for joining me today. And Trey, it's been a joy having you. Thank you for having me. I look forward to having you again next week. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, I've got some testimonies I want to share with you. I love sharing the testimonies, so keep sending them to us. Here's one from Ariel. After 20 years of believing, my father accepted the Lord Jesus as his personal Savior. Thank you for teaching me how to believe God. Here's one from Jane. I asked the ministry to agree with me several months ago regarding a car that I needed. One evening, a friend unexpectedly called me and said that she and her husband wanted to bless me by buying me a car. I now own a 2014 Toyota. Praise God. He is so good and he is so faithful. Amen. We rejoice with you, Jane. 
Doris writes and says, I want to thank you for your prayers. I contacted your ministry as my daughter and her children were in an automobile accident. Our children are fine and the doctors were able to repair the tear in our daughter's intestine. She is singing God's praises for the many miracles. We want you to continue to hold us up in prayer. Praise God. That's exciting. That's awesome. And I want you to keep writing your testimonies, sharing them with us, because when we share them over the air, it inspires other people to trust God, to dare to believe God to do the impossible. And also I want to remind you that uh, our special offer this week, if Satan can't steal your dreams, he can't control your destiny. A little book that you can carry around with you. You can read it on your lunch hour. I'm telling you, it's power packed, full of revelation knowledge, teaches you how to hold on to the dream that God has given you. Don't let go, just as Trey did. He grew up wanting to be a, a rodeo guy and look at him now, praise <laughs> God. He's doing exactly what God put in his heart and he's doing it for the glory of God. Also, three CDs, what it takes to stay focused. You know, God can give you a dream, but you have to stay focused. Don't give up because the dream doesn't come to pass immediately. So these are our special products that we have available for you this week. You can uh, order them by uh, looking at the information on your screen right now, or you can go to our website and uh, talks about how that you can order the products and additional products if you would like. Also, if you'd be interested in being a partner with our ministry, check that out. We would welcome that. We appreciate it. And listen, we pray over our partners and we believe God, just like the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter one regarding his partners, he said the same grace that was on him has now come upon them. They're partakers of it. So the same grace, the same anointing, the same favor and the same blessing that's on my life and this ministry, praise God, you become a partaker of it. Don't miss next week. We're going to continue talking about how that you can excel in what God has called you to do. And once again, Trey, thank, thank you for being with me. I thank look you for forward having to me. having you again next week. Yes, so sir. be sure and tell somebody, if you know somebody that has a dream and it hadn't yet come to pass, tell them don't give up. Watch Jerry Savelle's broadcast and praise God we'll be talking about how that you can excel in what God has called you to do. Thank you for joining me today. And you remember this as we leave the air. Your faith will overcome the world. Next week, he wants the gift in you and the blessing on your life to make a difference in the people that you're called to. Each and every one of us, we're called to a certain group of people. Yeah. And that group of people, God loves people. That is the most precious commodity mm -hmm. to God is people. Yeah. And so our gifts, the talents, us tapping into the blessing, Him causing us to excel and compete and, and uh, perform in such a way to get other people's attention, it's because He wants to reach people. Mm -hmm. It's sure. the goodness of God that leads people to That's repentance. Right.